know, this has potential to be a pretty epic start to the video. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> what the f was that? <coughs> that was supposed to be a. Oh, that was supposed to be a match for lighting this candle to get the vibe right. <laughs> Take two. Jeez, these things are road flares. I'm just trying to s set the vibe. <laughs> All right, everybody. And now my candle's going crazy. What a wild, what kind of, look at the flame on this thing. That is, was an insane start to this video. Not what I was expecting. Now I'm all distracted. Got to talk about science, but science is cool. <laughs> and that is one of my goals here is to convince you of that, to manipulate you into pursuing physical sciences. That being said, I want to talk to you today about downloading geologic maps and visualizing them in, in Google Earth or any sort of, you know, satellite imagery on your computer, whether it's a GIS software, but the most common one that you can get on your personal computer is Google Earth. And that might sound really specific and not that interesting, but I promise you it's really cool. And so I want to share my screen and I'm going to show you where to get geologic maps, where I get them at least most of the time, and then how to visualize most of them in three dimensions in Google Earth. Okay. Here we are in Google Earth. We have been exploring Mars in the previous video in Google Earth, but today we're gonna stick to Earth. So you might have this open on your home screen and you want to look, you want to visualize the distribution of different rock types on Earth's surface. That is what a geologic map is. More formally, I guess we'd call it a graphical representation of the distribution of different lithologies or different rock types on the surface. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna show you on Google where I like to go. If we're working in North America, in the Western US, I might go to something like the USGS Geologic Map Database. This is very, very cool. Top hit here. And this, this video, just so you know, will be focused on getting maps in some in various places in the United States, but these same kind of platforms, databases exist for countries all around the world on all seven continents. So here we are at the National Geologic Map Database. I'm gonna go to Map View here. This is a fantastic platform that's currently being developed for the visualization and acquisition of geologic maps. So you can see as at a zoomed out level, we have all these different maps that are basically mosaiced together across the entire US. So no matter where you live, you can get these. I'm always biased towards Montana because that's my homeland. So I'm gonna zoom into some interesting geology here. You'll see that as we get closer, the scale of these maps changes. And that's because as we get closer, we get into more detailed mapping efforts that have been done. I'm gonna go up to the Montana Disturb Belt because I wanna shout out one of my geologic heroes. My internet is not moving very fast right now, but these are pretty sizable files anyways, so stick with me. So we're zooming in here to Northwest Montana, the Montana Disturbed Belt. You can see beautiful geology already coming out of this. But there's a specific geologic map I'm interested in. You can see as I browse over these, they're illuminated. I'm gonna change my scale to 124,000 because I'm interested in something a little bit more specific. So I'll click on this map. This is the one I want for now. You can get these at all different scales, super cool. I'm gonna go to more info and it's gonna open up a page with the original map sheet. And it's as simple as this, you guys. I know it's gonna be a quick video, hopefully, unless actually I know I'm just gonna keep talking and maybe some people will stick with me. This is a map I want. The map sheet is amazing. And I'll just say right now, this is a map by an old USGS geologist in the 60s. You can see it was published in 1967, Melville Mudge. He mapped a ton of Northwestern Montana in the probably late 50s, maybe even mid 50s in, uh, in through the 60s. 
set the groundwork for a lot of interesting work that's been done since. So this is 1 to 24,000. This is a relatively small map area when we're thinking about the state of Montana, if you're familiar. Huge state. This is a little postage stamp, but a valuable one at that. So that's cool. We can get PDFs. What we want to get here, and you can do this for from this database all over, regardless of where you live, and I'll show you an example of that. We're going to come in here. We're going to download the Google Earth KMZ. You can see it up here. It just got thrown into my downloads file. We're going to come back to Google Earth, and I already know, you know, it's going to be somewhere up here in northwest Montana. I'm going to go from Google Earth Pro. I am going to open and I import I believe also works I'm gonna to go to my downloads and I'm gonna to go to the date modified and there it is USGS map opened it it brings in some annotations and I kind of stopped it on its path there but you can see it's over here in my in my temporary places if I wanted to keep it I could move it out of there but I'm gonna open this thing and you can see that it just popped up so it's very, this is simple stuff you know but a lot of people don't know about this and what you'll see as we get closer and as the as the satellite becomes higher resolution, we have terrain turned on in Google Earth, so we have topography here. And this is just so, such an amazing, powerful tool as geologists or as just Earth enthusiasts, because I come in here and you can see that this geology is is beautifully mapped and draped over, topo or over yeah, terrain in Google Earth and this is with you know no vertical exaggeration this is a, an, a, just an excellent way to visualize geology and you can do things like you know toggle the map obviously or change transparencies if you're interested in looking at like which specific rock types are which and so that's really cool the thing that's interesting about this is that we have we have repeated thrust faults that are placing in this case you can see D's in here for Devonian and we have a thrust fault and then here we have blackleaf cretaceous in greens and so what these are are imbricate thrust slices that are repeatedly putting paleozoic rocks cambrian devonian <laughs> rocks on top of much younger cretaceous rocks in green these are thrust faults very cool that's just a short you know that's so simple, I feel kind of weird doing it, but it's just a cool demonstration. I wanted to show one other thing. I wear a watch sometimes when I'm hiking and running, and I want to show you, I'm going to open up this GPS path I took the other day. Shout out to my friends Luke, Liam, and Lucas. We were going way down to the Sonoran Desert, and it comes in with all these crazy start and stop points. I'm going to open this, take out the track points in the lap. Cool, so this is my hike path the other weekend. We camped on top of this mountain. In fact, it was it was very windy and extremely fun. We had a fire up there and we camped on the summit of this high point in the Santa Rita Mountains in very, very southernmost Arizona. So the reason I wanted to show this is because, okay, it's cool that I have a GPS path up this peak, but a lot of times I'll go on hikes, I'll have the GPS path and be like, damn, I remember seeing some crazy like breaches or some conglomerates, these weird volcanoclastic rocks. Don't know what they were. Perfect, perfect example of a time when I would come in to the map view. We're not looking at Montana anymore. The Santa Rita's or this range down here. You can see here's the border, Nogales. That's the, the border city along the interstate that goes into Mexico. But I know generally where I was, I was in the in the Santa Rita's here. And it looks like we have a few ma maps intersecting. You might have to, if you're interested in these kinds of geologic questions, you might have to ch uh, filter some of the maps. Maybe I'll change the scale and I'll see pretty quickly that we have a geologic map here. Let's go see if I can get the Google Earth file. I'm gonna get more info. Oh, and it looks like there is a Google Earth KMZ. Just as simple as the Melville Mudge download. This thing looks like it is downloading pretty slow. I don't know why all of a sudden I have slow internet. Really slow, but that's okay. So I downloaded it. I'm gonna come back into Google Earth and open that thing. I believe it's this. And we're gonna zoom out on Google Earth a bit. Oh my God, I have the wheel of death. Okay, so maybe I 
missed the mark a little bit. Wow, that's so inconvenient. You guys get the point. It just so happens that my GPS path was just north of where this <laughs> geologic mapping ended, but I can get a decent feel for what's going on here. The point is, is that there are all sorts of different maps I can bring into Google Earth here uh, and get a feel for the geology. Even using this, I can tell that these KDs would be Cretaceous diorites probably, or dacites. And interestingly, there's purple, TR, MW. This is, these are Triassic volcanic rocks. And that's what we slept on at the very summit of Wrightson. You can kind of see this big pyramid of a mountain. The very summit is mapped as these Triassic rocks, which I knew beforehand, but I wanted to give you an example of how I can visualize that day of hiking with geologic maps. And it took me, a, if I hadn't been yapping so much during this video, that would have taken me about one minute to get my GPS point in there. Kind of cool stuff. I hope you find that helpful. I just kind of went in there and fast and loose, but I just want to be, you know, my goal is to be a transparent friend and teacher, hopefully in some cases where not in the strict sense, but in the sense that you just learned something interesting. So that's all I have to say. Santa Rita's are cool. If you guys want to see where I am, we'll change our view a little bit here. I'm right over here in the wonderful city of Tucson, Arizona with the Catalina Mountains, the Rincon Mountains, and uh, various other ranges surrounding. And in fact, I'm about to go to bed because in the morning I'm going up to Star Pass and I'm gonna run through the Tucson Mountains, gigantic pile of volcanic rocks. So geology infiltrates our lives, maybe especially my life <laughs> for better or worse. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. More content coming soon. Get Google Earth, check out the USGS geologic map database. I'll link these things in the description. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, comment, share with other friends who are studying geology. Things are booming out here and I appreciate your support. Peace out everyone. See you soon.